on high, if everyone would, is able and would feel like standing and sing praise, sing loud and praise to the Lord as we think about uh, the upcoming Easter season. Lord, I lift your name on high.
sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, hello, church. If you didn't come up to need prayer, I'm not pointing. I'm not pointing you out to If you didn't come up because you need prayer, you can come up to pray. Can you do that? You want to do that? Is there anyone else on this? Hello, church. God is so good. It's not God's will that any would perish. It's not God's will that any of us should suffer. Now, please hear me. I, I get it. We go through times. We, we go through issues. We go. We all got problems. As long as we're in this earth suit, this earth suit is decay. Is it not? From the time we're born, our, our bodies start breaking down, it seems like. But I believe in a God, in a God who is greater than all of that. So once you, if you can grab hands, grab hands with people, come on, we're going to be connected. <laughs> Church isn't just coming and sing this song here and start to go to home. But I believe we come to church and we can be changed. Amen. Every one of us. Whether it be from sickness or because we just need a spiritual breakthrough in our lives or whatever it is, we come to church to be changed. Not, don't come to church for a social club. I love all of you. But let me tell you, friends, if I can see you changed, if, if people's lives can be made different when they walk out of here than what they were when they came in. We accomplished what he wants to do. So let's just pray together. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that the stripes of Jesus Christ were not in vain. God, I thank you that his promise to us was past and present. By his stripes we were healed, and by his stripes we are healed. God, today we claim that promise, that promise that you have given us. We claim that upon our lives and upon our brothers and sisters' lives this morning. That God, whatever they came with, they don't have to leave that way. Whatever ache, pain, misery that they, they're dealing with, God, you're greater than anything. God, I thank you that you're, you're greater than shingles. Devil, we just, we just rebuke those shingles. We rebuke those problems in, in lives. The sinuses, the heart problems, the knee problems, the kidney problems, the head problems, the lung problems, whatever it is, God, you are greater. We rebuke the enemies working in those areas today. In Jesus' name. Because it is not by our might, it is not by our power, but it is by his spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So, Father, I thank you that today that you, God, will arise and your enemies will be scattered. We thank you today that, God, you can, faith can arise in us and push those things out. God, we thank you that your presence can overcome the presence of the enemy and what he is trying to do. Because the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And that more abundant. So, Father, this morning we just bless you and thank you in advance for what you're doing right now. We thank you for confirmation of the word today. God, that today signs and wonders would follow your word. God, touch and heal each person here today. God, as they've reached out in faith, they came out in faith. God, I thank you for that faith, that quick faith. I thank you that that faith will cause a victory in their lives today. God, we just thank you. Now, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I bind the devil from throwing doubts upon your life. From saying, oh, it couldn't happen, it didn't happen, it won't happen. God, we rebuke the devil from speaking those words over the lives. This morning we just declare that God, you are greater than all these things. You are greater than the devil. The devil has the power or hold over a child of God. So Satan, we bind you. Don't speak those words over these lives today. But we hear the words of life. We hear the words of Jesus. 
and we respond in faith. Faith comes by hearing yes. and hearing by the word of God. Yes. So Father, we thank you for victory today. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 chapter 11. Verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 starting in verse 3. Say amen when you're ready. Amen. He says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Father, we just thank you this morning. Again, we just bless you. Thank you, Father, that you are great and greatly to be praised. God, we just declare today that our faith looks up to you. Even if we don't see it, even if we don't see things, our faith looks up to you. This morning we bless you and we thank you. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts today through the Word of God. Show us Jesus. Show us Jesus. And let our faith arise today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. May we see you. Salvation before people were ever born. 
How do I know that? Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ was slain from the foundations of the world. So before the world was even built, God had a plan for salvation for you and I. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can get excited about it. In order for you to have a plan, you have to first have a vision. You don't start a plan without having a vision first. Dirk, you don't build a building without having a building, a blueprint, do you? Someone had to, before that, had to write that blueprint, did they not? Before you build something, before you, you know, car makers. Henry Ford didn't just slap some parts together and say, I hope they work. <laughs> No, he had a plan to put it all together so that the finished product looked like a car. Come on. Before we were even created, God had a vision in his mind of what he wanted this earth to look like. Okay, a lot of amens. Maybe I need to prove this. <laughs> Before we were even created, God says, I think trees would just look beautiful. God said, you know what? Fish. They may look ugly, but they're good for meat. How many people like to fish? I do. God, before you were born, says, I'm going to give them a way to have food. Before you were born, God said, hmm. Steaks and burgers. <laughs> They're going to love it. They're going to love it. Before you were born, God said, hmm, you know, a nice sunny day would, would really be beautiful for my people, wouldn't it? Hate to tell you this, but he also said the th same thing about snow. <laughs> but before we were ever created, God had a vision in his mind and set out a plan before we even showed up on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Wow! That's a God. Now, you ever see someone who's getting ready to have a baby? Wife is pregnant. Getting ready to have a baby. Especially if it's their first one, what do they do? They have a baby room, maybe. They get everything ready. They have, they get a bassinet, and maybe they paint the, color, the walls a certain color, and make sure they have plenty of bottles, and praise God, please have plenty of diapers. <laughs> you plan ahead of these things. I've seen videos of animals that are pregnant, getting ready to have birth. They begin to do what's called nesting, preparing. They, when you see a dog starting to nest, you know it's about time for them to give birth to puppies. God put it in us because this is how God works. God put it in us to have a plan. Scripture says that God doesn't do anything without first revealing it to his prophets. I want you to hear this. Because God is a God of vision. God is a God who, before he does anything, he reveals stuff to people. You know, with what is happening in Ukraine, honestly, it's been happening around the world for way too long. People, after the fact, say, oh, I knew this. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. Can I tell you something? God never leaves us defenseless without a plan. Ever. If we don't have a plan for it, it's because we weren't listening to God. Mm -hmm. Nothing takes God by surprise. So therefore, with his people, nothing should take us by surprise. Ephesians yeah. says that we can be made aware of the schemes of the devil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Think about this. And please, I'm not judging or badgering. I'm telling you, if we didn't catch it ahead of time, it's because we weren't listening. Because God is a God of plans. That before things happen, God, oh, nothing takes God by surprise. Nothing. God is not sitting up in heaven. Two 
Boy, that caught me off guard. <laughs> Boy, I didn't know that at all. Wow! How did... No way! If God is all-knowing, he knows the past, the present, and the future. And he makes a plan for it. Amen. Church, I'm here to encourage you today to know that any, whatever's happening in your, life, in your life is not because of God. Because God is working something out. God knew it, and God gives you the tools and equips you before it ever happens. You ever wake up in the morning, sing a song, or wake up in the morning, and you have a scripture on your heart? Oh, it's not by chance. It's not by chance. If you just think you woke up, because that's where your mind is processing it. No way. God puts a song or a scripture or something in your heart ahead of time to prepare you for what you're going to face. See, God doesn't leave us helpless. He doesn't leave us in a place where we have no tools, there's no defense, there's no resource. Uh-uh. That's not how my God works. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that whatever trial or mountain or whatever you're facing, there are the resources that you need to defeat that and to overcome that are available to you because they've already been made available to you. Amen. If you just grasp this, that God already put into your hands what you need. said this before, but I want you to just grasp this this morning. That when God, the Bible says in Genesis 1, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Everything that was necessary for him to continue that plan was in place when he created the heavens and the earth. I want you to see this. Every molecule, atom, everything that was necessary for things to happen, for things, for things to be, we'll get to that in a second, was already in place. So that when he said, we quote it as, let there be light, what it really says is, light be. It's a difference. When we hear, let there be light, we think that all these atoms suddenly appeared and there was the sun. No. What he did was, when he said light be, he gave those atoms that were already there because he planned ahead. It, he gave them permission to come together and make a sun. Wow! Wow! When God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything that was necessary for his plan to continue. See, there was a continuity about God's plan so that all he had to do was give light permission to exist. The trees. You know, people say, well, what came first, the, ch the chicken or the egg? Well, hello, the chicken did. <laughs> Why? Because God didn't need an egg. He just said chicken be. Do you, do you see where God's going here? That he didn't need to create an egg to create a chicken. The scripture says that he created something out of nothing. Things that we can't see. So all God had to do was say chicken. Cluck. <laughs> cow. Moo. Duck. Quack. He, all he had to do was give it permission because the resources, the plan, was already there. Oh, that's good. Good preacher, preacher. <laughs> I'm telling you, if, if we grasp a hold of that, this is where faith comes in because faith says, I can't see it, but I know it exists because Hebrews 11 1 says, faith is the substance. This has substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence. Now, 
Don't you have to see something to have evidence? It's the evidence of things, hello, not seen. You see, this is the building of our faith that God said, I put everything into motion. I put everything in, in my plan. I put every resource necessary so that all I have to do is give you permission. <clears throat> I want to tell you today, friends, to get nothing else out of this today. God has given you permission to speak by faith. Oh, are we not faith people? If we come to God, we must first believe that He is. I can't prove God exists. I can tell by His creation. But I can't prove that He exists. I can't look out and say, there's God! Now, He will show Himself to some people. But I, I can't physically, with my natural eyes, see God. But I believe He exists by faith. Because I look around according to His Word, which is sparked by faith, that I see it. When I see a new faith, I say, oh, he's right. He's right. So that all we have to do is speak. No. Let me just tell you something. I was praying this week. Boy, I love praying. I love hearing from God when I pray. Let me tell you, friends, if, if all I did was come up to you and read a story out of Scripture and tell you some nice things, I'm in trouble. Now, while I want to tell you nice things, I don't want to tell you what I think you need to hear. I want to tell you what God says you need to hear. Amen. And because I need to hear it too. Please, I'm not pointing fingers and saying, boy, look at them. They, they just need to hear this. Boy, they're just terrible Christians. No, what I'm saying is, I need to hear it too. Because it, that faith causes us to grow. Listen to this. Before creation, God spoke a plan of salvation. I want you to hear this. Friend, that before we were made, God said, I love Kathleen. I want her to be my child. Before you were ever made, he said, I love you. Before you were ever made, God said, hello, come be a part of my family. Before you were made, before Adam and Eve were even made, God knew that they were going to fall. God knew it. it. The devil didn't take God by surprise when the serpent came and started telling lies to Adam and Eve. And I don't blame him. I don't blame just Eve. Adam had a part in it too. You know, Adam had the audacity to say, Lord, it's the woman that you gave me. It's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> nope, Adam's fault too. But long before they were even tempted, God said, I need a plan. I need a plan for them because I love them. Now, friend, I, I don't believe that God chooses one person and not somebody else. God knows who he's going to choose, who is going to get saved. But he doesn't say, I love you, but I don't love you. He doesn't say that. I believe, because the word says it is God's will that all should come to repentance. Now, does everybody get saved? No. But it is God's will that they would. Because it's our choice to either receive him or reject him. But before we were ever born, God said, I love my people. I love, I love them. And I want to save them from their sins. I want them to spend an eternity with me. We like to say that the word says that Jesus said he was going to prepare a place for us. That where we are, or where he is, that we can do also. Can I tell you, God has a plan, a design for heaven? Yeah. I'm not much of a heaven preacher because you get so, sometimes you can get so caught up in it 
you do no earthly good. Oh, I'm going to heaven, so I don't need to love my brothers and sisters because I'm going to heaven. No. God had a plan for heaven that he's been working on since before creation. Heaven's always existed, but I believe that he's been creating a special place for you and I. Just think of it this way. In, seven, in six days, God created the earth. Jesus has been preparing a place for us for 2,000 years. Think how much better it is. We look around, and it's beautiful around here. It really is. Garrett County is gorgeous. Even when it snows. But can I tell you, heaven's a whole lot prettier. Heaven, heaven has more than this world can ever offer. Why? Because God's been planning it for you. He's building, he's building this place so that you can come visit him. And not just visit, you get to stay for an eternity. So before you were even born, God set into motion the plan of salvation. He set everything, and Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith that we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Stick here. It's by faith that we understand that before all this existed, that word framed, and I'm sharing this the other night in Bible study, that, that word framed means jointly fit together. The Bible says, Paul says that we are lively stones built together. See, God has a plan. God doesn't just throw a board here and a stone here and a nail there. God has a plan and a design. So before the world was formed, God set together a plan to fit it together nicely. You ever wonder how, if you ever look at some of the pyramids, that the people that had no technology like we do today, no computers, didn't have an iPhone to look it up on, but they could cut stones by hand, fit that in, that you couldn't even fit a piece of paper between them. Do you ever wonder how people who had nothing, they didn't have cranes, they didn't have anything that we have today, but could lift 10, 20, 30, 40 tons stones and put them into place just perfect? I guarantee you they had a designer who had a plan. They just, just didn't willy-nilly put the pyramids up. You ever, you ever, you guys ever put together something, maybe on Christmas morning or something, put together something and don't read the directions and you wonder why you have spare parts? You wonder why it falls apart? Hello, because you didn't look at the plan. Now, some of you guys are good enough to tell me, I know, you don't need that. Well, let me just tell you, instructions are there for a reason. <clears throat> Instructions are here for a reason. Because God planned everything and wants to give you all the resources. This is, this is what I want to do. We'll close here in just a minute. My minutes going to take a half hour. But you know, I'm going somewhere, okay? He said that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Let me tell you, friends. Not only was this world free, but I, I want you to hear this, write it down if you have to, whatever, highlight it, whatever you have to do. I want you to understand you can frame your world by the Word of God. You, you can frame your world by the Word of God. Now, I'm not, I'm, please, I'm not advocating black and grab it, but I also believe that we, what we have by faith, we speak it, and it is done. I just happen to believe the Word of God. Do you? Yeah. Do you believe that the Word of God is true? And do you believe when God says, I change not? You see, the devil doesn't have a creative spirit in him. All he can do is take, take what God has done and pervert it. 
But I want to tell you something today. You, as a child of God, were you not created in him, his image and after his likeness? Oh, church, we need to start framing our world by the word of God. Amen. Taking those things, the Bible says, that are not, speaking those things that are not as though they were. Why? Because you can't see it, but you can create something out of nothing by the Word of God. Oh, you're quiet. You can take your situation and begin to frame the Word, your world, with the Word of God. Put the Word of God around your situation. Make it like a hedge of, of, of bushes. Begin to frame your world by the Word of God. Begin declaring, speaking what thus saith the Lord. Not what I feel, not what my opinion is, and hello, not even what the preacher says. Because you can repeat what the preacher says, but until faith has arisen in you, it doesn't matter. Amen. I'm not asking you to repeat me. I have, you know, I have no problem with imitating. I was sharing with some of the other night that I used to imitate my pastor but when I was a kid. Nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you, when I began to speak, not what he said, but what the Lord spoke through me, things changed. See, we need to begin to start framing our world with the Word of God. So that, listen to this, so that things which are seen are, are made or were made, were not made of things which do appear. In other words, you may not see it, you may not think you have the resources for it, but when you begin to frame your world around the Word of God, things begin to appear that you never saw. Instead of saying maybe about your kids, boy, they're, boy, they're just terrible, they're lost in sin, begin to frame their world with the Word of God. Begin to speak. I am saved and my household will be saved. Amen. Amen. Come on, friends, you can do this, these things. When, when, when sickness hits you, you know, sometimes we say, ouch, or oh, me, or wow, or you know, oh, you know, like that uh, he haul song, gloom, despair, and agony on me. We begin to say these things, but Friends, and I'm guilty of it. I'm not putting fingers. I'm not judging. What I'm saying is that instead of talking about how, how bad your problem is, talk about how bad or good your God is. I may be in pain, but I'm healed by the blood of Jesus and his stripes. Minister years ago said, I, he said, I know I'm healed. My body just hasn't caught up with the word yet. <laughs> See, we, we, we need to get to a place to begin to frame our world with the word of God. Begin to speak the word of God over our situation. Because before there was time, before we ever anything ever happened, before the fall, which caused our problems, hello, it's because of Adam and Eve that we suffer sickness. It's because of Adam and Eve's fall that we have bad people in the world. Hello. Now, they don't get excused. It's not their mother's fault. Remember how they used to say that? It's mother's fault. I'm not saying that because we're responsible for our own actions. But the propensity for sin has been bred in us because of the fall of Adam and Eve. But God provided a way. Amen. God set into motion a plan so that before any of that happened, he says, I have a way of escape. Before you were ever in trouble, God had a way to get out of trouble. God gave you a plan, and that plan is the Word of God. Before you were ever in whatever situation, let me tell you something, it ain't always the devil's fault. We blame the devil on things in our life when it's really our choices. A friend of mine used to tell me that when he was young, he had the idea of sowing his wild oats and then he was going to pray for a crop failure. It's not the way it works, friends. But I am telling you that before it ever happened, God had a plan. God provided a way of escape. God sent his son, planned for his son to die long before 
you were ever born. Because he loves you that much. So if these things are not taken God by surprise, then let me tell you, friends, begin to use the resources that God has already established in your life, which is the Word of God. And begin to frame your world around with that Word. As, as believers, we are called people of faith. <coughs> you may not see it, but I believe that you can overcome it by the word. And the revelations, they overcame him. Talking about the devil and Christians. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and by loving their lives not unto death. Friends, let's begin to be those faith people to begin to overcome, frame our world by first the blood of the Lamb, second the word of our testimony. My testimony comes so important, friends. And also, not loving our lives unto death. You are not your own, according to Scripture. You are bought with a price. You have now become a bondservant of Jesus Christ. And a bond serving is someone who willingly attaches themselves to a master. Slavery, it's not slavery. And it wasn't forced on you. As a believer, we have willingly submitted ourselves to the will of God. I don't want to, I don't want to have to change the name of the hymn to I Surrender One Tenth. I don't want to have to change the song to think that, you know, I'll give God this, but not that. No, we need to say, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Friends, are you ready to frame your world with the word? I am. I am. I want, I want, that, I want that continuancy in my life. So that today when it happens, I speak the word. Tomorrow when it happens, I'm still going to speak the word. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Frame the world with the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that before this time, you put everything in place. I thank you that before there was time, you said, I love these people, and I will provide them a plan of salvation. I thank you, Father, that even before there was time. You, you put every resource, every, everything that we we're going to need for every issue we would face here on earth. Even knowing that man would fall, you, you provided resources. Most of all, we thank you that the, the greatest gift before there was time was salvation through Jesus Christ. So that all we would have to do is receive and walk in it, live it, be it. Christian be. As light be, Christian be. Father, just speak into our hearts. Let faith arise today. Let us be people of faith that even what we don't see, things can start to appear out of nothing by faith. So bless your people today, Lord. Draw us, draw us close to you and change us into the image of Jesus Christ so that we are no longer our own. We're yours. We bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Deeper, deeper in the of Jesus
Deeper, deeper.